Roger Mueller, 3210 105th Street, Southeast uh, Stewartville, Minnesota. Commissioner Tyne, from the start, we've been professional and asking questions backed up by data. From our initial phone conversation, it was my understanding we had agreement that you were going to work directly with our group through me. Other than sending me the link to, from the last meeting, you have not contacted me even though I have contacted you. And I've submitted our first issue. What we have received is minimal, minimalization of our concerns a total disrespect for many of the commissioners along with Heidi Welsh. And I ask, how are we going to proceed to get actual answers to our questions? I will start by handing out the official response to Ms. Welsh's letter. It explains her misunderstanding of our data, how she glossed over of what are true anomalies, along with ideas of how we can partner together. And lastly, if the Post Bulletin will like a copy so they can print a fair and balanced article, I have a copy for them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, well, I'll let you do this first, Patrick. Thank It really pains me to say this, but this is for Commissioner Beer, who I see is not here today. The reason we walked out of the last meeting on September the 6th is because most of us are already election judges and have been through the presentation that Luke presented to you multiple times this year. Nothing that Lou presented was new to us. Furthermore, our questions were not answered and our concerns were not addressed. As we have requested on August the 16th, we do not appreciate Commissioner Beer's sarcastic and microaggression comments behind our backs. His insults are unacceptable as a county leader. And I speak to you as just one representative of over a hundred people who are on the nonpartisan Olmstead County Election Integrity Committee. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, Dan Nelson. Good afternoon. As election judges, we understand how vote totals match for each precinct, process at the county, upload to the Secretary of State's database. This information is available to the public. Together with subject matter experts, we researched 2020 election data for Olmstead County using the Secretary of State's data. As was reported earlier, we found that there were approximately 1,800 more votes than there are voters. There's been some kind of confusion over what the discrepancy was, but we're saying the difference between the number of people who voted and the number of votes that were counted are different. Someone from the county told us this analysis is wrong, but the, the discrepancy remains, and there has been no effort to date to work with us to understand or investigate. If it was just me, I'd be open to the possibility of an error on my part, but people with more knowledge than I have double check queries and believe this discrepancy to be real. I can imagine a few reasons for this difference, but they are all problematic. It's important for us to understand how this can happen. Therefore, I'm asking again, who is the best person to assist us in determining a reason for this discrepancy? Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Dave Dave Springer, Northeast Rochester. I spoke before. Um, I'm here on one of the items that has not been answered um, to our satisfaction yet. Um, so Roger Mueller, last time he asked 
for the version and number of the software being used on machines along with the cert certificates required by state statute for the machines. The response from the county attorney was, Olmstead County does not possess or maintain any of the data that was requested. Hmm. Uh, there is no IT shop that does not keep records of your software versions. Like most of us here have computers at home. They, we all have to update them and we have to know what version they are. Even I worked at Mayo Clinic and we have to know what version we're at to know if the next version is going to be compatible or not. And so how, how can the attorney um, say that, that Olmstead County doesn't possess it? I mean, Luke has to know because each year he says there's updates that have to be done on the machines. How does he know that if it's not registered or, or collected or someone knows? So that's a little weird. Also, if you truly do not have it, why are you not following the state statute? You're supposed to be certified with the uh, Secretary of State on the website. They're supposed to know what you have. You're supposed to certify it. Um, <clears throat> without it, how do you determine when to upgrade or what to upgrade? How do you set up your recovery processes for system failures? We don't want system failures when we're voting or even during the test times when Luke's running through the process, right? You have to rebuild it, and if you don't know what version it's at, where do you start? <clears throat> so, how, um, so how do you justify spending over 300,000 over three years and know what you are purchasing? Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think the next person is Jim. Let's get a hand raised and I you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for your service. I thank you for allowing me to a little time to speak with you. My name is Jim Katchmarzinski. That's not right. <laughs> probably a good reason I have a hard time. I'm 39 year Rochester resident and a small business owner. I'm also a voter at Ward 1 Precinct 10 in Rochester. In, previous, in a previous meeting here, Luke Turner mentioned that the county attorney chose to make the addresses on the return postcards private. Well, there is no private information. Uh, I can Google any person in here or anywhere and get their addresses or buy a mailing list or use the available political party canvassing applications that show information along with voting information. We simply want to check for any human error that can and does happen during data entry. Thank you again for your time and service. All right, Ray Hicks. Thank you, commissioners, for this opportunity. I am Ray Hicks, and I've lived in Rochester 45 years now. I want you to know that I, re I received an email from election manager Catherine Smith back in September of 2020. It asked me if I would like to serve on the ballot board. I replied in less than 24 hours that I would like to do that. I did not hear for a day, two days, three days. It, it dragged out until eight days later, I sent her another email. <clears throat> told her I hadn't heard, I'd like to hear, I'm still interested, I'd like to be on the ballot board. I never did get any reply. Now, Luke Turner has mentioned advertising for absentee ballot positions. All four of the GOP election judges that were hired to process the absentee ballots in 2020, they got hired after a lawsuit was fired against the county because there were concerns about what was going on then. You know. If these positions are advertised, I'd like to know why the same four 
GOP election judges who sent a ballot board in 2020 were the ones used again in the May primary of this year, in the August primary of this year, and the same ones that are lined up to be used in November 8th in the general election. Furthermore, I'd like to know why did Luke Turner tell one of these judges that it is just easier to hire the same people than to advertise and consider others for the position. Thank you. Thank you. All right, what's left? Hi, thanks for letting me speak again. Two sessions ago when we met here, I asked whether Olmstead County was going to shred the ballots from 2020, and my question was just, are you going to shred the ballots? And of course, the requirement under law is that the ballots be maintained for 20 months. And so in September, we come up, I think, on the anniversary of that. I'm not sure about my timeline, but we are, you know, August to September, we're in the rough field where it's a question. So my concern was then, you know, are we going to shred the ballots? And I communicated with county commissioners asking not to shred the ballots, please. Please don't shred the ballots just because some people want to, you know, verify a few things about signature cards and whether things match. But however that process would go forward, the reply, and I'm not here to call out that individual, but the reply to my email was essentially, we follow the law and we're going to, we're going to shred the ballots as required to that effect. And my reply was may, you know, in inverted quotes, not must in inverted quotes. So I was just saying the law stipulates that, you know, but Secretary Simon wants you to save the ballots for 20 months and then you may shred them. But whereas there are considerations, why not, you know, there's questions, why not just keep that, those ballots on hand? It doesn't cost a lot to keep them in storage. So my question today is, oh, by the way, that person apologized and they said they had indeed checked out the letter of the law and the spirit of the law was in keeping with the way that I had framed it in my email. So there was an apology and a thanks. And I think that's great from a person in government. That's terrific. And so have the ballots been shredded? Am I out of time? Is that the beepering? Okay, so have the ballots been shredded? That's my question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else outside of this topic that would like to speak? Okay. Hearing none, I'll call the meeting order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance.